Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. This is another video in our series of videos uh, about the no-loop signal error. We've shown you quite a few things already if you've been following along this series. Uh, we've shown you how to test the power coming from your outlet into your charging station, meaning your, your transformer, your low voltage cable, to make sure that's all good. Uh, the different colors of the LED indicator on the front of the charging station. We got solid green on this one. We showed you uh, the flashing green light and no signal or uh, no loop signal error and you know how to reset that. Uh, we also just showed you how to uh, use the quick info menu on your mower to test the quality of the, the signal strength coming in to your mower. You know, it'll give you the readings for your front loop sensor and your rear loop sensors in the mower. And you can also use that information to or that that feature to check the signal quality from your charging station and all that. That was our last video in this series. So now in this video here, we're going to get into the real nitty gritty and some of the more technical stuff that is really going to help you guys out when it comes to trying to diagnose and troubleshoot a no loop signal error. If you've seen some of the comments that we've made on social media when people talk about no loop signal error and you know they've gone around, they fixed the brake, they can't figure it out, they still have a flashing blue light, they're not sure what's going on. We always tell them check for continuity. And a lot of people get confused by this. They're not sure what we mean when we say check for continuity. We're talking about making sure you actually have continuity between the left side of your boundary wire and the right side of your boundary wire. So continuity would mean continuous, a continuous loop. You can send a continuous signal the whole way through there. And the way you test that is you use a multimeter in the ohm setting and you're gonna test basically for resistance to see if, if there's an open enough path through this wire to get from that side to this side. So when we, uh, when we give that advice to people, one of the first things they ask is, I, I don't know what to do with my multimeter. Now, before I get into that, let me explain again. I know there are very expensive multimeters out there, and then there are cheap multimeters like this. For what you are doing at your home with this automower, and a few times you're going to use it, and, and what you're checking when it comes to this stuff right here with this boundary wire, you should be able to get away with a cheap Harbor Freight multimeter like this. It will get you close. It will get you in the ballpark. You don't have to spend the big money on a fancy multimeter. If you want to, great. But if you're only going to be using this thing for something like this, and it might be, you know, once or twice, maybe a year, go ahead and get the cheap one. We're going to show you here. You're going to see that these tolerances aren't that tight, so it's not really going to be a big deal. And you'll see how you can get close, at least with this uh, cheaper multimeter here. So what you want to do now is you want to set this to the ohm setting, which is the horseshoe. And you're going to have that on 200. So you got that set. Now, when you test for continuity, you can see that we have that one there. That means that there is no continuity. There is no reading here of, of any ohms. When you take and you touch the two probes together, all of a sudden that goes to showing some resistance there. You have some continuity, uh, 1.0. So you have something going on here. You know that there's a there's a connection here because you can you can see that there's there's a reading. So it's going to be the same thing with your boundary wire. You know you want to be showing something, some kind of reading, some kind of resistance on your uh, your ohm scale and if you have nothing you know if you have a clean break this is what you're going to get so what we're going to do is we're going to take off our right side boundary wire here that one's on there pretty good and we're going to take off our left side boundary wire and i purposely have two different connectors one here i have the one that husqvarna uses this is that purplish uh, plum colored uh you know, squeeze together one, and then we have more of an automotive style female spade crimp one connector. And we'll get into that later on, but that's why there's two different connectors on here. We did that on purpose. Now for this one, it's real simple because you can just take your probe, stick it in the end of there, and it holds that nice and tight. 
this one you have to open this up and you have to hold the probe or clip the probe against your connector or you have to strip the wire back to get the bare wire to hold the probe against it but you can see holding this against here and the other one jammed in the wire there there we are we're at the same reading as we had when we just took our two probes and touched them together so we know we have a continuous loop through this wire we are going to be able to get voltage or a signal to go from here all the way around and come back into the charging station here that's what that's what creates your loop signal you have to have a full loop to have a loop signal so again right wire left wire 200 on your ohm scale or on your multimeter you have a probe on either end of the wire and there you go you want to make sure that you have some kind of continuity there now that is you know that's as good as you can get a low reading like that it means you have continuity there's a very minimal resistance and and that's what you can all you can hope for but this is a very short loop i'm running here so you're not going to have very much resistance the more wire you put into the system the more resistance you'll have just because you know the voltage you're pushing out of here to come around and back into this side it's just like you if you're trying to run a mile or run two miles you know halfway through you're going to start to get tired you're going to lose a little bit of momentum right well that's the same thing that's happening here you know you're going to gain resistance when you add more wire to it and on the older charging stations that's why you would go from having a solid green light to a solid blue light because once it would hit a certain amount of resistance it would trip that blue light to say hey don't go anymore because you're going to end up putting too much wire in here and you're not going to have enough signal strength you're not going to be able to get enough voltage coming from your uh, one side back around to the other side so that was the reason for that now the flashing blue light in the manual i believe it says that around 18 to 20 ohms is where that flashing blue light could be tripped and and start to give you that no loop signal error so it'd be the same thing as you just did here you would take and you would measure your uh, measure your resistance and instead of it being you know 1.0 or 1.2 or something like that you would be up there to 18 or 19 uh, ohms of resistance now i always tell people when you're measuring, if you're around 15 or 16, you should start to be worried. You should start looking into uh, replacing any any 3M connectors you have. You know, these jobs here. Any, any splices or patches you have, start looking for cracks in your wire. And the reason I say that is because, yes, you're below the limit for tripping that flashing blue light to give you a no-loop signal error. But when you're that high, all it takes is a good heavy rain, get a little bit of moisture in the ground, and it could send you over that limit and trip that flashing blue light and give you a no-loop signal error. The other reason for that is the more resistance you have in your wire, then the, weak, the, the weaker your signal will be. So you get to those open areas, and like we showed you in the last video where you're checking that, uh, that signal strength on your front and rear loop sensor, you know, all of a sudden now your mower can't get as far away from the boundary wire before you start getting a no loop signal error on your mower, uh, even though you still have a, a solid green light on the front of your charging station. That's going to be caused by high resistance in your wire. And the high resistance one is a little bit tricky to find because when you're going around air with one of those cheap tone testers, like we've shown you how to use, you get to a, a clean break in the wire. You know, and it's basically like a, it's like this, it's a dead end. So the way those things work is it's sending a tone, it's sending voltage through the wire and you're, you're picking it up with your, um, your, your tester, you know, that you're waving over the wire, you're receiving that, that signal and all of a sudden you get to a clean cut well that stops. So you go any further, you don't have any signal, you know, Hey, back here where I have signal, pull this wire up. Hey, there was my break. Well, when you have, you have corrosion, you have, uh, you know, a cracked or broken connector that's not making good connection or anything to put high resistance in that, in that loop, then you have the potential for that signal from your transmitter for your tester to pass on through just enough 
for you to not pick it up. And that's where having a tester uh, with a uh, with a meter on it is a good thing to have. They're much more expensive, but that's why the professionals that are doing this every day tend to use them because you might still hear the tone going through there when you when you get to a spot where you have that high resistance. But at the same time, you're going to be able to see the signal quality drop on the meter on the tester. And I'll give you an example here. You know, this is a piece of the, the green boundary wire. And you can see on the end of this inside there, uh, it, it's just all full of corrosion and rust. So, you know, this is in the ground. You think, okay, this looks good. Well, when you test that for resistance, put our, our probe right in the end of that there till it stops. And hold the other one against it and you can see there on our meter we've got nothing it's nothing the corrosion is that heavy that it will not let that pass through there now we touch the probes together there you go we got continuity but with this wire there is nothing there so we run into this a good bit and uh, we have some pictures of some stuff that we found uh, over the past couple months to show you you know what might cause these issues in your boundary system that you don't realize that are giving you this high resistance and and tripping that flashing blue light to tell you there's no loop signal error without having a clean break anywhere let me just strip this back here see if i can give you a better view of what's inside this this wire is as green on the inside as it is on the outside you can see right there inside that that is just full of fuzzy green corrosion right there. And that's why the signal won't pass through. You know, you're not getting metal to metal contact when you put your probe in there. You're getting nothing. You're getting all that, that corrosion, just like on a battery terminal, you know, when they get all green and, and corroded up. You don't get that continuity. You don't get that connection between the battery terminal, the end of the, the cable and the, the battery post. And that's what you're getting here. So now again, back to what causes this, you know, I say about the moisture and everything. So that's, that's why if you get up there close to 15 ohms, you want to start looking for uh, any kind of easy fix or easy thing to replace to eliminate the, um, the resistance in your wire because it's going to give you better signal and it's going to cause you less headaches in the future. So let's say you have a, a spot where it gets cut. Um, and then a few months later, it gets cut again to where you've got, you know, within three feet, you have you have two or three of these 3M connectors in place. Get rid of that. Cut that out. Put one piece of fresh wire in there. Every time you put one of these in there, you're going to add at least a little bit more resistance because it's something else that the, the power has to go through. It's a different type of metal. It, it's, uh, you know, think about it. Think about it as if you were out in traffic and you've got to get to your destination. You know, you've got to get from here to here. And if you have a straight shot, obviously you're going to get there faster. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you energy. If you've got to go out of your way and then you've got to cross a bridge and everything else, it's going to take you more time. It's going to waste a lot of energy. That's what you got going on here. That's added resistance. So you cut down on them then it's less likely that you get a heavy rain or something happens that's going to send you over that, that threshold to trip your flashing blue light. I know I'm kind of rambling on here because it's a lot to take in for a lot of you guys because you, you don't really understand this. And this is the first time you're hearing about it, the first time you're seeing how to do this. But that's all there is to it. And what that will do when you come out here and you first say, okay, I know I've got power coming to my charging station. i got a flashing blue light. I check my wires for for um, continuity. You can rule out that that whole boundary wire system if you have good continuity. Like let's say you're at about eight ohms to that entire system, you know your boundary wire is good. You don't have to go walking around here looking for breaks. You can focus now on your charging station. It's probably something with the board, uh, you know, or maybe just your your transformer is not putting out enough power. Whatever but you don't have to spend days looking for a break that's not there or chasing a bad 3M connector that's not there or corrosion that's not there because you already know it's good. So here we go with some examples of some stuff that we've found, you know, where it's related to 
corrosion or high resistance. This is the black UV wire. This was actually buried underground. It broke apart when we tried to pull it out of the ground, but this was held together by a couple strands. And if you're using one of the lower price tone testers, you could actually get the tone to go the whole way around the boundary wire. But when you tested it for resistance, you had very high resistance, which was causing your flashing blue light and no loop signal error. This is another piece of the black UV wire. This was buried underground, uh, no loop signal error. And we went around there, we tested it. It tested good with a tone tester. And then we uh, checked the continuity. We definitely knew there was something wrong. We found this when we used our good tester then with a meter on it. And you can see something was trying to eat through this insulation from the outside. All these brown spots you see on the black insulation on this wire, that's not just dirt. That is divots in that insulation. And we don't know what it was. It was something in the soil that was causing this reaction with the insulation. We replaced a large section of it with the black HD wire. Haven't had a problem since, but you can see here, uh, part of the wire just blew out. And when that happens, moisture gets in there, you get rust, you get corrosion, and it doesn't take long to build up resistance and trip that flashing blue light. Here's another piece of black wire. This was underground as well. This one's a little bit different though, because here you can see the open spot in the insulation. This was not where something, you know, was eating away at the soil. This was something pierced through this wire, uh, whether it was an animal chewing through it from the outside or... Uh, something was stabbed through it. Maybe it was cut on a rock or something like that, but that's what opened this one up. And again, you're getting moisture in there. You're getting corrosion. You're going to have a buildup of resistance. This is something that wouldn't happen right away. It could take, you know, a couple months, maybe even a year to show up as a high resistance area and trip that flashing blue light. This is a good one here. This is one, you know, this would be like a big game hunter, you know, finally bagging that animal thereafter and mounting it on the wall and telling the stories about it. That's what this is here. We should have mounted this one on the wall so we could tell a story about it because this is one that would just make you pull your hair out. This was out there buried in the ground for well over a year from what we understand. And it was a no loop signal error with a tone tester. You had tone the whole way around the property. Uh, we knew it was high resistance because we checked for continuity. And even with a, a meter or a, um, uh, a tester with a meter on it, we were still getting pretty good readings the whole way around. Where this was located in the boundary system was where you have two wires going in and out from the island. So that made it pretty difficult because you have that wire that's completely good, you know, where the power is coming in, that's going to give you the good signal. And then you have the wire going out, which would be this one here, the way we were testing it that would give uh, a disruption to signal or a weaker signal. But because you have that other one right on top of it, that's what makes it hard to diagnose this. So we narrowed it down to the section where we knew it was at by testing the, uh, the signal quality coming through with our tester. And we ended up pulling up a few feet of the boundary wire. And lo and behold, this was it right here. That connector right in the middle was completely rusted and just not giving good contact between the two wires that this was supposed to be splicing back together. Sidewalk crossings are another spot where we tend to find these wires that are uh, starting to rub through on the bottom side from the sharp edge on the cement. You know, if you don't round that off a little bit or get any of the sharp edges smoothed out, that can easily happen. People walk on it, they step off of it, and it just cuts through that insulation a little bit more every time. That'll, that wire will eventually get weak because it's cut through so far, or it gets moisture in there, corrodes, and then really gets weak. And this one here, we lifted up one a little bit, just popped right apart. So you might be saying, well, hey, isn't there a thing you can put on that wire to protect it? You know, in case you're weed eating or somebody steps on it, you know, to keep it from getting damaged. Yes, such a product does exist. And here's a picture of one. Uh, this one was placed in a, a sidewalk seam where the wire came through. Somebody hit it with an edger while they were edging along the sidewalk, smashed it shut pinch the wire inside there and it's a metal protector. You know, it, it's a conductor obviously because it's metal. So you can still get signal going through there because the wire is pinched in there with this metal. But what happened is this thing rusted and now you got no signal going through there because inside where the wire is cut, it's just full of rust and going to add resistance to your boundary wire loop. 
Another thing with these is you have to watch when you place them into the seam. They can create a pinch point on the inside that you won't see. And again, it can conduct that signal. It can allow it to go through because it is a metal uh, guard for the wire. But once you get any kind of moisture in there, you get corrosion, you're going to get rust on this guard and you're going to get high resistance and a weak signal there. Here's some green wire that was buried underground. This had corrosion all through it and it broke apart. Now again, this is one where it could have been perfectly fine, then it rained really hard, and two days later you've got a no-loop signal error and you have no idea why, and it's due to the high resistance. You go out there and tug on the wire just a little bit and it breaks apart because it's that corroded. When you find a spot in your boundary wire that does have corrosion, make sure to pull up more of the boundary wire in that area to check to see how far back that issue could be going. Here you can see this lump on the insulation on this wire. So you want to cut that wire even further away from where that lump is at because that lump is a sign of corrosion inside here. That's why that is bubbling up like that. So go back, you know, a good five or 10 feet, cut the wire, make sure everything's good on the outside of the insulation. And you don't see any indicators of corrosion spreading back that far. And then you're going to be able to rest a little bit better knowing that you have a good connection through your boundary wire in that area now. Here's a green wire. This was buried underground, but not very deep. And you can see this just broke apart. There is some corrosion on there. But what happened with this is, see that flat side on the top there? Something scraped against this, rubbed the, the insulation off the outside of the wire. So, of course, it's going to corrode because it's got that big opening now for all the moisture from when it rains to go into the wire. So this is, again, another one where you know that that wire was that open and exposed to moisture. You want to cut a good amount of that wire out to protect the rest of the wire from that corrosion spreading back through it. So here's a few more quick corrosion pictures. You can see bubbles on the insulation. You can see the wires inside are turning green. Um, you know, this is all going to cause that extra resistance in the wire. It doesn't break. It still stays together. But again, it's going to keep the voltage from passing through it. And that's what's going to set off that flashing blue light, give you a no error message because it's not enough voltage returning back into the charging station. The spot here in this wire, it was still barely holding together until we pulled on it a little bit and it broke apart. But you can see this was cut because it's at the same exact angle on both sides. You know, something cut this. So you already had a bunch of strands that weren't connected anymore. It was creating a bottleneck with the power trying to go through it. And because it was exposed, then it's being opened up to the moisture to create more corrosion. At a flashing blue light, you could get a tone through there, but the resistance was very high. So it wouldn't have taken much more for this to get to the point where it either just broke apart and it would be easier to find, or it would just lose signal that bad. It would drop off that bad that it would be easier to tell where it was at. Here's the end of another wire that got nicked. You can see it was cut at an angle and it just corroded until it finally just broke apart. Here's a 3M connector. This time it was not the 3M connector that was the issue, but what it was is the, uh, the person who tried to fix this, they stripped the insulation off the wire before they put it into the 3M connector. So it just pulled right back out of there. There wasn't anything to help hold the wire in place. And as that was slowly pulling out of the connector, Obviously, the more it came out, the higher the resistance got because it just wasn't making very good contact anymore. On this one here, you can see the corrosion right there by the 3M connector just blew that wire apart. This one would actually send a tone through it. It didn't give the indication that there was a clean cut anywhere in the wire. It showed very, very high resistance. But the issue with this one was when we went to try to figure out what was going on, why there was a no loop error, it had rained and it rained all day. We go there in the afternoon after it stopped raining and the ground was so wet that it was helping to conduct that signal to, to pass it through at this spot. So we ended up, we left, uh, came back the next day, ground was completely dry, found us in no time because that extra moisture wasn't in the ground to aid in the conducting of the, the signal going through this wire in this bad spot here. Here's another 3M connector right where the wire goes into it. You can see the white and green corrosion there, blew the insulation apart. Um, you know, this one here is not so much the fault of the 3M connector as it is the fault of where it was placed at. This was in an area that just gets flooded out all the time when it rains heavy or the snow melts or anything like that. 
that's not an area where you would have one of these connectors at because anytime you get that that heavy rain or anything you're opening this up to the possibility of getting water in there slowly but surely and you could have one of those inst instances where you have a solid green light it rains and then all of a sudden you have a flashing blue light high resistance a couple days later dries out and everything's back to green again and, and ready to go and you don't know what happened this is what happened and eventually it just gets that bad that it just blows apart like this one did so that was a look at some of the stuff that we've found through the past couple months so we could show you you know some examples of what goes on and what causes this issue and and why it's so important to check for continuity uh and look for high resistance in your your boundary wire let's talk about the different connectors that i have here and why uh, i have them on here for an example now this one here this one is a, a metal crimp on connector inside there. You strip the wire back, you crimp that on. That's good and solid. You've got good connection there. Inside of that, you have flat across the back, and you have the two curled pieces on the other side. So you've got all this surface back here, and then the edge on the left and the right in there to make contact with this wide tab on your charging station. This one here, the Husqvarna sends out, uh, in the installation kits, you've got that tiny, thin little area right there to make contact with that big wide tab on the charging station. Just that tiny little area right there, and that is it. So you could easily have problems there with that. Also, once you pull that on out there a couple of times, you know, these can start to get worn. Yeah, you can try to crimp them shut, but again, you're not going to gain that much surface area that's going to make contact with this whereas with the other end with this one here you give that a little squeeze and you're definitely going to get that flat side closer and you're probably even going to get the sides to touch too so you're going to get contact from multiple spots with this connector so your chances of having an issue with these are far less the other big issue that you run into with this style connector is you have this exposed end right here this is out in the elements i mean yeah it's under this cap but it's exposed to the open air the moisture the humidity and you will start to see this wire corrode from this open end back through and we've seen this in some areas where you know the moisture in the air and everything is very high you'll see that this wire will corrode back through and we've had some to the point where you go to pull the wire off to check for continuity and the wire just breaks right behind this connector because this connector is cutting into the wire and then you have that corrosion making the wire weak and that's it, it's, it's done for. So we recommend that you use a connector like this or even one you know with the, uh, the shrink tubing at the back, that'll seal it up really well and you'll be a lot better off than using one of these as far as keeping the corrosion and and uh, high resistance out of your boundary wire. So here to give you a better example of what goes on when you have that connector, your, uh, your purplish style connector here from Husqvarna on the wire. You can see I just took that one off and it actually it cuts through the wire. You can see that these, these wires here, these strands are just completely open now because it, it cuts through there when you crimp that shut. Same way with on the other side. That's going to cause resistance too, because now all of a sudden, you know, let's say this was 18 strand wire. Now you've only got signal going through uh, 10 strands. So you're, got, you're going to have a bottleneck right there trying to send that power through this wire. So all of this is stuff that you need to check out when you have the flashing blue light. The flashing blue light doesn't mean that this wire is just, there you go. You saw how easy that broke. The wire, it doesn't mean that the wire is just broken and there's a, a clean cut there. It can mean a lot of different things, and this is how you narrow it down and figure out what those things are. So hopefully this video does a lot of you guys good. Um, hopefully now you understand the, uh, the instructions that we're trying to give you. It, it's really hard if you're not familiar with how to use this stuff to understand when somebody's giving it to you word for word rather than giving you pictures or uh, you know, a video like this showing you what to do, what to look for, how to set a multimeter and all that stuff to, to check this stuff. So I really hope this helps you guys out, uh, helps you guys save a lot of time with diagnosing your no-loop signal errors. 
We have more videos to come on this situation, on this error, how to diagnose it, how to solve it, what causes it. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss out on those upcoming videos. Now, as always, if you need automowers, automower accessories, automower parts, or anything to do with automowers, check out our website, www.roboticmowerservices.com. If you don't see what you're looking for on our website, shoot us an email at roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. Let us know what you're looking for. If it's a part for your mower that you don't see on there, let us know what mower you have, serial number, and we'll get you hooked up. We have a lot of stuff on the website already. We have even more in stock and ready to ship out. We have new mowers ready to ship out. We have a lot of accessories. So we're here to help you guys out any way we can. And speaking of that, if you have a need for more technical assistance, you have some questions, send us an email to roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. We do the best we can to try to answer every email that comes in uh, or every message that comes through our Facebook page. You know, we get pretty swamped sometimes and it's, it's tough to get caught up. There's times where, uh, you know, emails would go to our spam folder. We don't see them right away, but we do the best we can to help all you guys out. There's a lot of people out there that can vouch for us that we've taken a lot of time to help them with their issues and walk them through it so they can get their mowers back up and running. Um, you know, you guys support us by buying parts and products from us and subscribing to the, this channel and watching these videos. So we want to do what we can to help support you so that you can be happy with the product that you invested in. So simple as that. Um, again, that's going to do it for this video here. I've rambled on long enough as usual. It's going to remind you again, please subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.